Hey guys, how's it going? So today we want to talk about something called conditional probability and the concept of dependence versus independence. Okay, so conditional probability basically says that um, there's a difference between the situations when we don't know anything about an outcome and when we know a little bit about an outcome. Okay, so for example, if I roll a die, the probability I roll a three is one out of six. Okay, so we know that. But if the die is rolled and it's hidden, so somebody hides it, but somebody can see it and it tells you that the number is odd, right? Well, if you already know that the number is odd, now all of a sudden the probability that it's a three becomes one third because there are only three odd numbers, right? So this actually comes from the fact that our sample space, space which was six, is actually divided by two because the probability of something being odd is a half. Okay, so we're gonna figure out the math behind all this, but the concept of conditional probability is you're told that something's true, so that means that your sample space is reduced. Okay, so let's look at why this happens. So what we have here is dependent events, right? So this is events that depend on each other. Right, so we talked about this in class. Um, and so for example, say you have two cards um, and you want the probability that they're both queens. So the probability of that is, you know that for the first card you've got four out of 52 queens and the next one you've already pulled one queen out so you've got three out of 51. Okay, so let's figure out how we get that mathematically. Well, what I've got here is the probability of A intersect B. Okay, so let's say the probability of the first queen and the second queen. Okay, and what you see here is probability of A times the probability of B, and then there's this vertical line A. Okay, what that means is it means B given that A has already happened. Okay, so in our context, this would be the probability of the first card being a queen. Okay, that's fine. There's nothing to affect that one. And then what I want is the probability that the second card is a queen given that the first card is already a queen. All right? So this part is the 4 out of 52. And this part is knowing that you already gotten rid of one queen was the probability that you get another one. Okay? So this is what defines dependent events. Events that one action has effect on the following action. Okay, so now let's see what effect that has on conditional probability. So in conditional probability, um, we want to figure out the probability of something given that we already know some information. Okay, so that's P B given A, and it's calculated by this formula. Now where this comes from is the fact that probability of as we said before A intersect B is the probability of A times the probability of B given A. Okay? So A times B given A. Okay, so it comes from this fact we just isolate the given part and this is our formula, okay? Now note that also I can do A given B. All that happens is, so it's still A intersect B because that order doesn't matter. It's just that in my denominator, it will be B, right? So the given part is what goes in the denominator, okay? So let's see an example. Two dice are rolled and you're told that the sum is at least eight. Determine the probability that the sum is actually 11. All right, so you roll two dice, somebody that wants you to gamble on it tells you, all right, I'll give you a hint, the sum is at least eight. What's the probability that the sum is 11? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a lattice diagram first. So let's now figure out our formula. I want the probability that the sum is equal to 11, given that the sum is at least, so greater than or equal to eight. Okay, well, what this is, is the probability that the sum is 11 intersect 
the probability that the sum is at least 8 over the probability that the sum is at least 8. Right? So this comes from this formula on the last page here. Right? A intersect B over A. Right? So our A is at least 8, our B is 11. Okay? So now let's fill this in with numbers from our chart. Okay? So the probability that the sum is 11, well, that is, uh, could be 5, 6, or 6, 5. So that's the probability that the sum is 11. Okay? And now, um, what about the ones that have the probability that sum is at least 8? Well, at least 8 means it could be 2, 6, could be 5, 3, could be 4, 4, uh, 5, 3, 6, 2, right? It could be a sum of 9, could be a sum of 10, it could be a sum of 11, or it could be a sum of 12, okay? So let's look at our numbers here, all right? So I want the intersection of 11 and at least 8. Well, the intersection is right here, right? It's what falls in both sets. So this is 2 out of 36. So 2 out of 36, and greater than 8, or greater than or equal to 8, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So 15 out of 36, which gives us 2 out of 15. Okay? So that means that if we're told that the sum is at least 8, Right? Our probability of having 11 is now 2 out of 15. Before we were told that, our probability of having 11 was 2 out of 36. Right? So see how our chances increased a lot. All right. So let's talk about independent events. Okay? So independent events are, well, if A given B is the same as A. Okay? So what this means is that B had no effect. on A. Okay? So, we're going to have to use this formula a couple of times in your homework, but you got to know that if B has no effect on A, then A given B is just A. Well, what that means for our um, intersection, right? Remember over here, right? We had A and B, B A and then B given A. Well, this B given A is now just the same as B. So, what that means is that for independent events, a and B is just A times B. There is no modification to this. Okay, so let's see how we use that. So a bag contains five red coins and six black coins. If you pull out two coins, determine the probability that both are red. Okay, now we've got two different cases. Okay, so we've got, if you replace the first one before drawing it. Okay, so that means I take the first one, I look at it, then I record what it is, I put it back, I shuffle, and then I pull again. Well, my probability of getting the first one red is, well, there's five red out of 11 total. So the first one is five out of 11, right? And then the, for the second one being red, it's still just five out of 11, right? So this is 25 out of 121, okay? So you can see that these things are independent. Right? The fact that I drew the red one first didn't affect the second one at all. Okay? Now, if I keep the first one and then draw the second one, well, the first one, it, I have 5 out of 11 chances. Right? But the second one, one of the red ones is gone, so I've only got 4 successful coins left, and one of the totals is gone, so it's only out of 10. So this is 20 out of 110, which is 2 out of 11. Okay? So these guys are what we call dependent. Okay. All right. So there's the homework. Okay. We'll keep working on it in class. Um, see you guys tomorrow.